Welcome back to Aglow Generations. I'm Janae Levern, your host of this podcast, the Aglow Generations podcast. Welcome back. Um, it is really exciting to continue on this project of a podcast, and it's exciting to see more people interact with it every single week that they come out. So if you are new to listening or watching, welcome, and I hope that um, if you're not a part of a glow, that you feel welcomed, and we would love to have you as a part of a glow. This ministry, a glow international as a ministry, is located in over 170 nations, and we have been in existence for over 57 years. This is our 57th year, and um, part of the Aglow International Ministry is Aglow Generations. And our heart and focus is to um, build upon the legacy and vision that the Lord has given to Aglow for all these years and carry it on into the younger generations. So that's ultimately what the Lord has uh, in store for Aglow Generations. And the podcast is just one tool that he's led us to this year. We've never done it before, but so far it's been a pretty exciting journey. And while challenging at times, um, I've come to enjoy it and I hope that you have too or, or that you will if you're new. So first I'd like to start off by reading in 2 Corinthians. I closed my Bible, so let me get back there. <laughs> Okay, 2 Corinthians 3 is what I was reading earlier. And uh, I had this whole other plan, you guys, for what I was going to talk about today. I even had like typed out notes and everything. But um, when I opened my Bible this morning to 2 Corinthians, um, I was really struck with what God says starting, well, the whole thing. But in chapter 3, verse 2, Paul says, Your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Everyone can read it and recognize our good work among you. Clearly, you are a letter from Christ, showing the result of our ministry among you. This letter is written not with pen and ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. It is carved not on tablets of stone, but on human hearts. We are confident of all of this because of our great trust in God through Christ. It is not that we think we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification comes from God. He has enabled us to be ministers of his new covenant. This is a covenant not of written laws, but of the spirit. The old written covenant ends in death, but under the new covenant, the spirit gives life. And I, I love that so much. And, um, it's such an example of, you know, what I was saying about the heart of a glow generations, but also of a glow international and to be, um, you know, examples and witnesses of God's love and to carry that love from generation to generation. So, um, let me just put a bookmark in that. With that said, I saw a Facebook post, I think it was Facebook, um, from Brian Chappelle, Pastor Brian Chappelle, and the he said, the primary job of a pastor is to help people love Jesus more, and that just really resonated with me because that ultimately, as director of Aglow Generations, that is my heart um, for this ministry, but for what I'm doing. As Paul said, in what I just read in Second Corinthians, we're not qualified. I'm not qualified to do this. It's it's God who works through me, um, equipping me to do this and really giving me the things to say, honestly. When I sit down to just do this work, you know, on my own, um, nothing really comes out. <laughs> uh, but, you know, entrusting the Holy Spirit and leaning into his voice, I, um, I'm able to accomplish that. Well, hopefully, <laughs> but I'm able to do this job. And, and I don't just say that lightly. I actually mean it is by his grace that I am able to do this position and hopefully 
um, work with all of you together uh, to accomplish his purposes. So in the book of Ruth, okay. So in the book of Ruth, we see that the Lord built a plan in Israel to deliver those who could not deliver themselves. And we see that represented in, in the story of Ruth and in the lives of Naomi, Ruth, Boaz. Um, and he provided for a redeemer. God provided for a redeemer in order to save those who were put in a position of bondage and destitution. So if I keep looking down, it's because I wrote myself some notes. <laughs> I I do get a little scatterbrained, so it's easy if I have some notes in front of me. But I know if you're watching this, you can't see that I have notes. Uh, some people have their little, what are those called? Um, teleprompters. I don't do well with those. So I have my little page of notes. And so if I keep looking down, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Uh, but a redeemer basically is one who delivers or rescues someone by paying a price. Now, that language should be very familiar with us and our concept of Jesus as our Redeemer. But in the light of Ruth's story, which, of course, is before um, Jesus came, and so the Redeemer delivers or rescues someone by paying a price. To redeem is literally to buy out. A kinsman Redeemer or family Redeemer, as some translations call it, under the Mosaic law was a male relative who had the responsibility to act on behalf of a relative who was in trouble, in danger, or in need. And that's, of course, what we see in, in the book of Ruth and in their lives. Um, the man who bought his family land or kinsmen back was known as the Redeemer so the fan, sorry, the family redeemer. And in Hebrew, I'm going to do my best here. In Hebrew, the goel. This was not free deliverance. This was deliverance at a price. And the goel paid that price. He met the debt owed by his relative, which that kinsman could not pay on his own. So the Lord created the custom among his chosen people in such a way that those in the darkest need of hope had provision. The concept of Redeemer must have served as a strand of hope in the midst of despair. The existence of a kinsman Redeemer, the Goel, was the hope of Israel. This divinely mandated role stood as a bright shining comfort for those in the mo in most desperate need. Now, I, um, I read that from, let's see, where did I write it down? From Carrie Molestein in the book, The Gospel of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. So credit to her for that and for educating me. <laughs> um, she had a lot of really great things to say about this subject. So if, if you want more, definitely go find that book and read it. But she says, for Ruth, the Lord put in place a righteous man who was both able and willing to serve as Redeemer as Ruth's redeemer because of her covenants. Let's see. No. For Ruth, the Lord put in place a righteous man who was both able and willing to serve as redeemer because of her covenants, God's plan and the righteousness of a redeemer. Ruth received redemption for herself and her loved ones. The offspring of this redemption eventually led to Israel's greatest political king, David, and to Israel's greatest spiritual deliverer, king, and redeemer, Jesus Christ. Ruth was willing to save and, in, and was in turn saved by another, was ancestress to the Savior, and it's not a coincidence that our redeemer descended from a line of redemption. I love, I love that. <laughs> um, you know, it's such a good reminder of how God worked and I've said this before, but how he works so intentionally and we see evidence of it through history <clears throat> from old history to new or from Old Testament to New Testament, from old to new to today. Um, he he connects all of the dots. There's not there's not gaps in his plan. It's it's not like he. You know, just on a whim oh 
this generation can just figure out for themselves. I'll, I'll pick it up in another one. He doesn't do that. He connects us and together and he connects his purpose throughout history and in doing so throughout generations. So from Ruth, we can under, better understand the Savior, his covenants with us, and the rest God has in store for us and Christ's glorious redeeming power. So ultimately, there's so much more to the book of Ruth than sometimes we realize. And, you know, it, it is such a beautiful story that sometimes it can be easy to just see it as that, as a story, but it's not. And Naomi, Ruth, Boaz, they were all real people who walked the same earth as us and God worked in them and through them as he does us. And it is through them that we today find salvation because ultimately Jesus came from the line of David who came from the people in this story. So I, I just think that's so cool. I hope that you do too. <laughs> um, so reading that, not only is it a story of redemption and it's a story of love, but it also really portrays the idea of generations in such a huge way. And of course that, that is what this podcast is for, but also what, you know, the ministry of a glow generations is for ultimately. And I've said this many times and I'll probably say it many more times. Ultimately the heart of a glow generations, I believe is the heart of the father to see generations bridge the gap between, well, to bridge the gap between generations and if you've heard me say that on many podcasts, well, I'm, I'm not going to apologize because that really is what I think the Lord is really calling us to, not just in a glow. Um, a glow is one of the tools God uses, but ultimately it's, I believe it's his plan and purpose for the world, for his children in the world, no matter what nation we're in, no matter what language we speak, no matter what our eth ethnic background might be, we together collectively are the people of God. And together we need to work by linking our generations and, and doing the work of God in that way. So another great person that, <laughs> that I read from was James Gall. And I believe many of you know who he is. If you don't, you're more than welcome to look him up. I was reading um, an article he wrote on GodEncounters.com. And I have not, I don't know that I read a lot from him, but I was really encouraged by reading this. He, he wrote this um, probably a, well, a number of years ago, probably about 10 years ago. But I was really struck because as I read it, everything that the Lord has been putting on my heart, he wrote. I mean, like, it was like reading um, on on the screen what God had, has been putting in my heart and really what I've been speaking out loud as much as I can. Of course, I'm pretty new to this position, but um, it's been on my heart for years. So I thought that was really neat. And, you know, I love when God confirms things for us in that way where we think, oh, wow, Lord, like, thank you for giving me that vision for something um, that's really powerful or whatever. And then you kind of go about it and, you know, maybe the enemy kind of creeps in or your own self-doubt creeps in and you think, oh, maybe is that from the Lord? I think it is. And then him know, you know, him knowing us, he put something in front of us that is his voice in our ear a little bit saying, yes, you're on the right track. You're with me and I'm with you. So praise the Lord for that. And, um, at, in reading James's article, um, 
he talks about the generations working together and the idea that generations accomplish more together than each working independently. And I don't think that's new information to us. And I don't think that's something that applies to only, you know, Christianity and, and God's work in that way because God works in all all different areas of of life in ministry but also in regular places of work James says that we must link generations to have common vision and mission and I summarized some of this so it the concept is on his article but I didn't want to quote him word for word and get in trouble so um he says we must link generations to have common vision and mission that applies to a glow. We are not meant to be independent, but get this, but have mutual interdependence. That is key right there. We as generations, Gen Z, millennial, Gen X, baby boomer, and I mentioned silent generation and um, our mid-Atlantic regional generations coordinator, Amy, um, got in touch with me and asked me about the silent generation. So I should probably explain to everyone. It's generations from about 1925 to 1945. And the reason that they call it that is because that was a generation that was often told um, children should be seen and not heard. And they were, they were and are very independent and they, they just get things done. Um, and so it, it's not, it's not called silent generation in any way to be offensive. It's really speaking highly of them because as a generation that was told children should be seen and not heard, or if you're not in that generation, but you were told that as a child, I, I think highly of everybody that lived in that atmosphere um, because many of them are really hardworking people who are very honorable and respectful of their elders and not that the rest of us aren't but um i do applaud those who are from those generations so anyway um i want to read that again we are not meant to be independent but have mutual interdependence god is generational in nature as father son and holy spirit one god in three persons reflects a generational perspective in his relationship to mankind. Father gave son, son gave himself, and the, and the Holy Spirit enables us to carry out the work of God's plan. I had never really pictured it that way, but once James actually, he says it a lot, a lot better than my little summary here, but um, I love that he pointed that out because while I know generations is important to the Lord, and we've talked about that on the podcast, um, you know, seeing it that way, that God not only is intentional in generations, but he's intentional in himself as three persons in one working generationally himself. Like, I love that. The Lord takes, James says, the Lord takes the wisdom of the older generation combines it with the resources of the middle, then mingles it with the zeal of the younger generation. The younger ones, the younger ones move in action. The older cheers them on. And I love this. The older cheers them on by saying, run with our vision. We will speak counsel and wisdom to you and out of our experience. We will back you with our resources and our prayers. You run with the vision and you know in order to do that james talks about and he goes into a lot more detail but he talks about how the younger generations must honor the older generations we and i say we because i i'm part of millennials but we gen z millennials whoever if you're younger than a generation then it applies to you i suppose <laughs> um but the younger generations need to not dismiss the ideas, values, and counsel of the older generations as something old or irrelevant. Not that we are, but you know, if in listening or watching this, 
you know, if you see something maybe in your life or in the life um, or actions in your lighthouse or something like that, or even in your own family, maybe not in a glow, maybe just on a personal level, we need to stop and reflect how are we treating those in the generations above us? Because we can't link together if we don't respect each other. And we can't carry that call that the Lord has put on our lives if if we're not working intergenerationally. It's so important and crucial to move forward as a ministry, as a GLOW, to see a GLOW excel into the future. We have to be linked together and we have to do what James Gall says. We have to have the younger ones run with the vision and the older ones speak counsel and wisdom and speak out of their experience. We, and I've said this before, we younger generations cannot carry on the legacy of a glow if we are carrying forward the wisdom, counsel, and experience of those who came before us. And in the same way, James Gall says that the older generation needs, and this isn't from me, this is from him. <laughs> I agree with it, but I didn't write it. James Gall says the older generation needs to stop seeing the younger generations as children with nothing to offer. And he goes on more in that, but um, those are the notes that I took. And what I really like about sharing his article is that me talking on the podcast and him writing in the article, we are representing two very different generations. James Gull's generation is probably more in, you know, in, in the realm of my grandparents' generation. And I, of course, am speaking out of my experience as a millennial. And so together in a glow, we need to run and carry the vision and we need to carry the experience, counsel, and wisdom that the Lord has placed in the lives of those who have been in this ministry for for years. And because without without them, we wouldn't even have an aglow to carry forward into the into the world and to continue to be a tool that the Lord uses. And I think, um, or no, I should say, I believe in the heart that the Lord has, or what the Lord has placed on my heart is really a glow has a bright, bright future. God is wanting a glow and, and I believe has plans for a glow into the future. And in order to do that, though, we desperately need to see this vision that God's putting on. And it's not me. As director of Generations, I might be the one speaking in the podcast, but it's not just me speaking this. And so, you know, one of the great ways that we do that is when we come together every other year for our global conferences um, and we build relationship that way. But when people from the nations come to the United States, it's so that they can attend our conference, of course, but also so that we can learn from each other. We can build relationship with each other and learn from each other. Our Glow Lighthouses and Area Teams might be in specific regions and our Glow Nations are separated by, of course, you know, the borders that border our nations, if that makes, if that makes any sense. But we can all learn from each other. And there is a great deal of wealth and knowledge and experience and, what does James say, and wisdom and counsel to be had for Americans from other nations. We're a global ministry. And as a global ministry, we really need to be learning from each other. So happy Tuesday to you. And I will be posting this next week. So I hope you had a wonderful Easter and, um, you know, celebrating with your family, friends, um, maybe you're just your spouse, your best friend alone, however you might be celebrating the wonderful holiday that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I hope it was wonderful and many blessings to all of you. And I hope that you join us next week where, well, we'll see what the Lord, the Lord gives us because he is good about giving us things to meditate on and to 
just be in awe of all of the wonderful things that he is to us. So many blessings and love. See you soon. Bye.